welcome back to my channel. My name is Rachel. That is the R in the RK Stumbling Bear, and I am a reader and a writer. And welcome back to my week one of August wrap up. And I'm just going to go ahead and jump straight into my reading wrap up. For this week, I finished one book. And that was on Saturday, I finished Broken Places and Outer Spaces by Nanetti of Korafor. This is what I would call, I would call this a creative nonfiction because this is based off of events in her real life. However, how she's writing it, it feels kind of like you're reading a novel. And that's just like the rhythm and the word choices that she's using how she's describing things. It's not that the events in here don't feel like they could happen. So Okorafor, from a teenager, knew that she had scoliosis and depending on severity depends on what the treatment is. And for her, it was decided when, when she was in college that it was best to have a surgery that would straighten out her spine. And during the surgery, her strain got straightened too much and then she was paralyzed from the waist down and had to relearn how to walk. And that's why to this day, you'll see that she sits a lot or she uses a cane. So even though she has relearned how to walk, that doesn't mean that she always has the best control. She goes into it better in this book, but this book really is, that happened to her and then she found writing. And how even before she had been being shaped to be a science fiction writer, even though she says that she herself had liked horror. That's what she enjoyed reading before her surgery. And she goes into why she focuses on African futurism, which she does define as different than Afrofuturism. African futurism is based in Africa and with technology, going from how they are progressing with technology. She uses the example of visiting Nigeria and seeing everyone with cell phones, but not very many people have a computer. Just how technology has entered that society differently than here in the States, where she did grow up, but would go back to Nigeria to visit other family members. So that's why she got to see the two sides. So I do want to share something she says at the very beginning. There are two thoughts that came right after each other, and I just think they are beautiful. So the first one is, this series of openings and awakenings led me to a profound realization. What we perceive as limitations have the potential to become strengths greater than what we had when we were normal or unbroken. And much of science fiction, when something breaks, something greater often emerges from the cracks. This is the philosophy that positions our toughest experiences not as barriers, but as doorways, and may be the key to us becoming our truest selves. So that's the first thought, and I just love that. I mean, it kind of goes with my personal philosophy is adversity and trial is there to help shape us, to help us to become better and not to hold us down. But I think it also goes back to how we approach it. And that doesn't mean that we should tell other people, oh, you have this adversity and trials, so this is going to help you be better. That That's not the right attitude to take. This is has to be a personal mindset, something that if you're like, oh, I have this trial, well, this is what I can learn and how I can get better. I realize it's not a mindset that a lot of people use or have. So her second thought that I really liked was, in Japan, there is an art form called kintsugi, which means golden joinery to repair something with gold. It treats breaks and repairs as a part of the object's history. In Kitsugi, you don't merely fix what's broken, you repair the total object. In doing so, you transform what you have fixed into something more beautiful than it previously was. This is the philosophy that I came to understand was central to my life. Because in order to really live life, you must live life. And that is rarely achieved without cracks along the way. There is often a sentiment that we must remain new, unscathed, unscarred, but in order to do this, you must never leave home, never experience, never risk or be harmed, and thus never grow. Now that one also hit me very strongly. 
because I look at life as a series of adventures. Doing this channel it was a new adventure for me, and it's one that I'm still in the journey of and I'm still enjoying, which is why I keep coming back. And even though these videos are getting put out like a month after I film them, I'm still doing it because I enjoy this journey and I enjoy getting to talk with the community. And I'm going to segue into something more dealing with my personal life here. Um, I've told a few people that I am also running for office. I know, like I said broadly, that my husband is running because he filed back in February. But I filed in April to run for our, my local school board. And a lot of sentiment that I'm hearing from parents is they want their children to have stability and security. They don't want their children to go through trauma. And so my platform that I'm running on is more about change and hope, is change is going to happen throughout our lives. So it's better to build the life skills that help us to deal with the change. Even if we're anxious or worried, if we try to keep everything the same all the time, then that's exactly what they're saying here. There is often a sentiment that we must remain new, unscathed, unscarred. But in order to do this, you must never leave home, never experience, never risk or be harmed, and thus never grow. So when parents are saying, I want my child to have stability and I don't want things to change, like one of the other candidates used the example of their child was upset because their teacher took another job in another district and he doesn't think that's right. And I'm like, well, that's not your decision for that's that teacher's decision of where they want to go. I understand your child is upset that their favorite teachers leave left, but that happens to all of us. And there could have been a different way. You could have said, oh, hey, is there a way that the te you could still have contact with that teacher since they're leaving the school district? They might be able to have a different type of relationship with an ex-student versus a current student. You can't do that when you're a teacher. And I like the idea that by living life, we're going to get cracks, but then we have the golden joinery that makes us more beautiful. We are all the sum of our experiences, and if we never experience anything, we don't learn anything, we don't grow, we don't become. We get stagnated, we get fearful. We turn to ideas of isolation and allow ourselves to think in terms of them versus me and accept the mindset of othering, fellow human beings. I'm sorry that on this one I'm probably more philosophizing. This book, I absolutely loved. It hit me in just the way that I needed at this point in my life as I'm thinking about all of these things for things that are happening in my real life and then getting to track them back to, hey, science fiction. And that's really what I like in science fiction is a lot of it is commentary on our life today. I mean, you've read as much science fiction as I have, you can see those connections and you can still enjoy the journey. Going to librarian school, the research is out there that if children read, they build empathy. So reading science fiction helps you be able to connect with the issues of the day and become more empathetic for people who have experiences that aren't your own. So. I am going to get off my soapbox. Loved this book. I think you all should read it. And then for my first prompt for the magical readathon that G does, I chose to do my jewel crafting prompt and I picked up The Jasmine Throne by Tasha Suri. I am about a third of the way through really, really enjoying this and I really do feel like the hype of this book is totally warranted. It's fun to read and Suri is very good about embedding the character's culture and the reasons for why they do things and how they interact with the world but without banging you over the head with it and I really really am enjoying this. I decided to pick up the last book of Torin Kerr. This is The Privilege of Peace by Tanya Huff. This is her last Torin Kerr novel where Torin is a warden and the plastic alien menace comes back getting to see characters that I love and watch them as they are 
continuing to progress in their lives and in their journeys. Obviously, those are the two things that I am going to be continuing reading, and I'm not sure exactly what I'm going to pick up next. I am more focusing on the prompts for the Magical Readathon that I have, and if you want to know what books I have chosen for that, go check out my TBR video. But I think this is going to be a good reading month. And for my writing wrap up, I am still not writing, but as I am also running my own campaign now, I think it makes more sense that I put the writing aside for the present time being. Now, the general election is going to be in November, and I have asked my sister to join me to do NaNoWriMo, to do a co-written story. So we're going to start planning that, and so I'll start getting some more writing information for you guys in the future. And for other media, continuing to watch Crime Scene Kitchen, really like the most recent episode where the judges didn't know what had been made and they also got to go through the kitchen and had to determine clues and then they both were like, oh, this is actually harder than we thought it was. You know, kind of get the taste of how the contestants feel without having the pressure to actually cook something and be right. And watch the most recent Master Chef join seeing the variety of things that people are coming up with. Like this group of cooks have some very distinct styles and I've seen a variety of things being made and it's been a lot of fun. Dustin and I also watched Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 and oh, such a good ending to that trilogy. I think this is one of the better stories of where it's picked up from Endgame and you see the complication emotions of dealing with what had happened and then also dealing with the Gamora that they have is not the one that they originally had. If you haven't seen Endgame, if you haven't seen Endgame, I think it's been not long enough that I shouldn't be in too much of a danger to spoil it, but in Infinity War, Gamora was sacrificed by Thanos to get a stone. And then in Endgame, they were trying to reverse what Thanos had done. They end up pulling a Thanos from an alternate universe and a Gamora from an alternate universe. And this Gamora ends up staying in their universe. And Quill's like, you know, we were in love. And this Gamora's like, I am not the same person at all. And I don't know, this is weird. And so she goes her own different way. So Quill is dealing with the grief that the Gamora he loved is dead and there's another Gamora who is not interested in giving him a chance whatsoever. <laughs> She's gone on to create her own life to do her own thing and they end up getting her to help in this adventure and I love that this story was based off of Rocket and how he came to be where he is in the universe and oh makes the heartstrings just pull so much. And also it's a great story of like the Gardens of the Galaxy is like a fa found family, but you can have more than one found family throughout your life. And that doesn't take away how you feel about one group versus another. They are all your family. That one I'm definitely going to be nominating for the Hugos next year. <laughs> what's coming up for me. I know I'm definitely going to keep making these weekly wrap-ups even if I don't get them out particularly fast. I also know that I'm going to be participating in Space Opera September. They haven't yet announced the prompts for that, but when that comes out I will have a TBR video that will pop up. And then other than that, a lot of my time that generally would be reading or watching things or writing will be going to knocking doors and campaigning. I never thought I would be someone who would run for office and yeah. Apparently 
my husband has rubbed off on me. I hope you guys are all having a wonderful summer or have had a wonderful summer if this comes out in September, like my typical trend right now. It, I hope you all are having a wonderful time and I look forward to hearing from you and watching your videos. Thank you and have a great day.